This video is part of a series. It's heavy in scientific terminology and may expect familiarity with previous videos. If you're confused, please watch the rest of the playlist up until this point, or check out my genetics terminology document, both of which are linked in the description. Thanks! Hair length seems very simple. It's controlled by the L locus, also known as FGF5. Capital L is dominant and causes short hair. Little l is recessive and causes long hair. But actually, little l doesn't exist. Instead, there's five different alleles that cause long hair, appropriately named L1, L2, L3, L4, and L5. But they're all close enough to the same thing, and most are only found in specific breeds, so we simplify by lumping them all together into little l. Some places instead call this pretend long hair allele S, since a lowercase l can look a lot like a capital I, but that's also confusing because S is already used as the white spotting allele. Anyway, polygenes are largely responsible for the exact length and thickness of the coat. Sometimes dogs have curly or wavy fur. The C locus is also known as KRT71, wherein the C allele causes curliness and the N allele doesn't do that. One of my sources uses CU-C to represent the allele for curly hair instead of C, but I can't use that one because I will pronounce it as cuck and laugh too hard to continue recording this video. As is a pattern at this point, there's a second allele that also causes curly hair, but it does the same thing and hair it's the same way, and was found so far, I believe, to have been only found in the curly-coated retriever breed, so we'll just pretend that there's only one curly-causing allele. So what about wavy fur then? Incomplete dominance, a CN heterozygote will have the intermediate phenotype between curly and straight, which is wavy. Wire hair, also known as furnishing or furnished hair, is what makes a dog look like they have big bushy eyebrows and a beard or mustache. The locus responsible for furnishing is F, also known as RSPO2. I've seen F used for furnishing and N used for non-furnishing, I've also seen capital W used for furnishing and little w for non-furnishing, so take your pick. On breeds where furnishing is standard, non-furnished faces are referred to as improper coat. These breeders use N for normal hair to refer to furnished dogs, you know, with the eyebrows and the beard and whatnot, because to them, that is normal. That's breed standard, that's what they expect. They use IC for improper coat, the smooth-faced dogs. I don't know why this feels so silly to me, but I love it. For this video, I'm going to use F for furnishing and N for non-furnishing to stay in line with the curly locuses C and N. Whatever you use to represent it, the gene that causes furnishing is dominant. The one that doesn't is recessive. What's less silly is that furnished dogs have a much higher rate of cancer occurring at the bases of their hair follicles than smooth-faced dogs. Mutations in RSPO2 are associated with the same type of cancer in humans, too. Very sad. Y'all know I love animals that look like disappointed fathers. I wish this one wasn't so dangerous. Ridge is a weird phenotype. Fur on just about any mammal, dogs included, grows towards the tail. That's why petting animals backwards, tail to head, is annoying or painful to them and feels spiky and weird to us. You want to pet the same direction the fur is going. But dogs with the ridge phenotype have a single stripe of fur along their spine growing backwards, from tail to head. Ridge is represented by capital R, which is dominant. Little r is, of course, the recessive non-ridge allele. You could also use N for non-ridge for consistency if you wanted, which is what I'm going to do here. Ridge dogs are prone to a weird condition called dermoid sinus, which is gross to explain, but don't worry, I won't show any graphic images. Essentially, there's like a hole, a tube, usually in the upper back or neck, that may just pierce some of the tissue or may go down all the way into the membrane covering the spinal cord. These tubes are small, but they produce drainage, they can become clogged or infected, and that's bad. If the tube touches the spine, it can cause neurological problems. Apparently, surgery can fix it, but if the tube goes too close to the spine, the surgery is intense and pretty risky. Homozygous ridge dogs are more likely to be born with a dermoid sinus than heterozygous ridge dogs. There's apparently two different genes responsible for hairlessness in dogs, but I really only have information for one of them. The most common and well-known is on the HR locus, also known as the Fox I3 locus, and it is represented by capital HR. It's incompletely dominant because it's... Homozygous lethal! Yay! Little HR, meanwhile, is the normal yes hair allele, or N, which I'm going to keep using. So an HRN heterozygote would be hairless, but an HRHR homozygote would be dead. It's embryonic lethal, so they die before birth. 
Some HR hairless dogs can still have hair grow on some parts of their body, as seen on the Chinese crested breed, but we don't seem to know why or how, and the guess is that there's other genes involved, modifiers or otherwise. HR also causes some pretty severe dental deformities, like missing teeth. One of my sources here is the American Kennel Club, which claims that there's a second gene that can also cause hairlessness, but it's recessive and not associated with lethality or dental problems, and it's apparently only found in the American Hairless Terrier. But I can't find anything backing this up. They also don't give any letters for it, so if you want to use this, uh, make something up. Maybe N for normal and HT for hairless terrier, or HL for hairless, I don't know. Keep in mind that regardless of the gene responsible, hairless dogs are more prone to sunburn and skin cancer than dogs who have a layer of pelt between them and the sun, and thus need extra care to protect them from the beams. I was expecting there to be more dog hair types, but those are all the ones I could find. I guess most of the variation is just breeds being selectively bred for extremes on polygenetic gradients. Or maybe more breed-specific alleles that I won't find unless I know which breeds to search, but I'm less interested in those than I am in the more general stuff. Everything I covered in this video is just simple two allele complete dominance with one exception. So let's do one square for simple dominance and then one for that incomplete. Here's the simple dominance. This is a long hair and a short hair. That's a 50% for long hair and 50% for short hair. This one is for our incomplete dominance locus. Both parents have wavy fur. Nice. 50% chance that their kid will also be wavy haired like both their parents, but there's also a 25% chance they'll have curly hair and a 25% chance that they'll have straight hair. In the next video, I'm going to hell! And you're coming with me!